Sumadi had that audacity to knock on the doors of WHO at a time when traditional medicine was dismissed as mumbo jumbo and WHO was not you know open to traditional systems of medicine yet it was just beginning to think about it AVP was actually prepared uh, to scale up uh, his activities to to better whatever they were doing and even to innovate to start things which are essential to support because they were uh, convinced that uh, uh, the future is very positive uh, for ayurveda globally so uh, they, they did many things uh, one was to start a, uh, a very unique uh, ayurveda college in gurukulam uh, type of it was definitely an experiment but it produced a uh, great uh, physician When I met him first, I found that this is the man I want to follow. He has got a special aura which attracts people on the first meeting. I worked very hard to pass through it and I am so happy that I got into it through the procedures. And then, then onwards, I became the part of this great saga, starting my sleep with four months. So when I had completed my SSLC and was all set to you know join the biology group and then pursue a career in medicine that is when my father suddenly announced that you know he wants to send me to study ayurveda this came as a shock and i came to realize that he had met krishna kumar ji they were friends and he had suggested to my father that i should be sent to study ayurveda so behind this was a very great vision which i came to understand much later so the message was very simple catch them young ayurveda was being sought after only by people who failed to get admission to modern medical colleges so ayurveda was a fall back option she said we cannot develop the science with dropouts i don't know how samaji conceived uh, but he found exactly the right place to execute that dream We were in a 70 acres of land in the background of Western Ghats, nearing to the borders of Coimbatore. Very nice place because they call it Mangare. We renamed it, rename it as Padanjali, but in the Padanjali is one of the best numbers of land in the Arctic sciences. He was very particular that everybody shouldn't just become clinicians. We need researchers. We need administrators. We need public health experts. we need people who would take ayurveda to the tribals villages one of his visions when during the interview which he told us was also that you know we must take ayurveda to the villages we must take ayurveda to the common man so big campus you can move around there is no restrictions in moving around behind that there is a forest there is a waterfall there is a stream we used to get up by 5 o'clock in the morning and a kalari master would be waiting for us with a big can of oil and all of us are expected to freshen up our body and massage our body with oil oil is not little oil it's lot of oil liters of oil we used to use and uh, one hour full kali and it was very good idum pullar vaan ഡോക്ടർമാരെ they said that you cannot have a course that is different from uh, uh, courses happening in other parts of the country the selection process needs to be standardized and uh, all all different uh, standards came into being in that so after nine batches i think 1996 the last batch actually got detected and then that seven and a half years course came into an end many people do not understand it i found that when we the first year onwards i can see the uh, difficulty from the management side to get resources to run because it is completely free 
20 friends are being fed being kept in a place teachers are hired teachers are meant to be and everything is given no funds and uh, he could not get enough funds to the extent he wanted to but still he did everything possible so that our needs are met but uh, he he never stopped his uh, what to say uh, desire to offer quality ayurveda education he, he never uh, there was not even a, a small gap so in 2000 he started uh, tatva prakashini a, a flagship event avp uh, which was meant basically to to compensate whatever that was lost in the conventional curriculum that five and a half years was. so tatva prakashini was in a way offering in say 14 days what what he offered uh, for seven and a half years just to expose them to a different model of living and learning WHO came forward with the first ever you know proposal seven and a half years long study seven to eight years it was to assess whether ayurveda is efficacious for rheumatoid arthritis so at that time in india it had to be done through the icmr the indian council of medical research and an allopathic team of doctors were actually leading this whole study and ayurveda the role of ayurveda was purely clinical they were just giving the treatment so they did not have much role in the interpretation so even though the outcomes were good the allopathic doctors were looking for one medication or one formulation whereas you know ayurveda is a individualized system so when they found that different patients received different treatments you know they came out with the conclusion that there is nothing in ayurveda there is no medicine that we can salvage out of this whole study this was very unfortunate so uh, who study who icmr project was in a way inconclusive uh, primarily because of uh, uh, what to say scientific uh, incompatibility it started reflecting in attitude and um, tolerance in, in different uh, other ways at that one point of time he was a bit uh, critical about the strategies he adopted was looking at only totally certain popular models and then find that at a, uh, at a larger perspective uh, whether that gurugulam model was uh, really uh, successful or not so that was the reason why uh, during one of the tatva prakashanis uh, we had uh, uh, le- um, pe- um, people from diverse field after bms from coimbatore ayurveda college we invited them and we gave them one and a half hours and uh, the topic was life after bms uh, life after patanjali bhi and that's how uh, dr dinakar uh, he was from the last batch i was uh, appointed as a medical officer in government of karnataka and straight away i happened to be appointed in uh, north karnataka where the lot of poverty uh, illiteracy was prevailing and uh, i that was a very plateau area and uh, i i had to walk to different villages so that was in 95 so slowly i gained fame around that 20 villages around that and i served there for 5 years and uh, the poverty was such a uh, in a very bad state because even if we tell people to buy medicine they could not afford so one instance i remember one uh, lady after postpartum hemorrhage that she occurred that is after delivery she happened to have lot of hemorrhage and she was sinking type towards the death and uh, i wanted her to take her to higher centers but uh, i summoned his uh, husband her husband but they told he told in kannada satre sat saile inno block in katkotini that means let her die i will marry another lady this was the plight of those areas and somehow i could hire one uh, vehicle and i took that lady to higher center near sagara 
and again we had to arrange for blood transfusion anyway ultimately she survived this is one but a small example how the misery of the life is still prevailing in the rural side it makes me laborious introspection myself i think for kishok maji to listening to people like dinakar for 14 days every day a, a lesser known kambitura uh, arvada college student comes and speaks about life after patanjali pri it was a very fulfilling experience for him see his journey was always against the tide it was either against uh, uh, the attitude of uh, policy makers towards ayurveda starting from 70s it was it was all it was always against the tide uh, no doubt at all but from 1990 uh, onwards uh, it was also against his own health con- uh, condition that because he had very serious uh, health issues since then many people uh, even even question him that uh, you are proponent of ayurveda and then uh, you are always sick and when he was sick this is also unique you know he worked you know even he turned his adversity into circumstances to involve scientists leading organizations like nih you know to engage in uh, world class research for ayurveda So when he was in the US on a medical advice for his own kidney problem he got a research scientist Dr Manorama Venkatraman to get interested she examined the archives and she was surprised to find that patients had actually improved with the ayurvedic treatment and she was asking why was this never published so she took painstaking efforts to go through those old records and you know make a summary of that whole WHO study and what were the outcomes and based on that she said that at that time national institutes of health had made an announcement of a grant for study of traditional medicine it's also ironical that you know in a, our own country in india we were not able to get funds of this magnitude america's taxpayers money was contributed you know for study on ayurveda that dr mano venkatraman had in the meantime got connected with a very eminent rheumatologist in the US the University of California Los Angeles Daniel first and so you know something big was happening one of the best institutions with clinical excellence was tying up with very leading universities in the US like University of Washington University of California Seattle and an apex body for research in the world National Institutes of Health was funding this almost something unbelievable was happening so we had researchers both from ayurveda and modern medicine and there was an opportunity to have an open dialogue and so the study design was much more robust dr daniel first so he deserves a lot of appreciation for being open minded he when he said that our treatment was complex he was a bit hesitant in the beginning but he came down to india he looked at the patients and when he saw rheumatoid arthritis patients at our hospital and responding to ayurvedic treatment he said something is happening let us test it lack of evidence based is one of the problems of ayurveda if this is the opportunity we can create evidence if we can be given five patients along with the other people and along with allopathic doctors we can give our medicines as of now western medicine does not have any remedies after 33 years of research with eminent american professors if they could tell the world that ayurveda is even relevant as efficient as western medicine without side effects it will be a great opportunity for india to lead the world majority of the person only you let you all over the preventive and promotive aspects and it spread it to other parts of the world everybody today from abroad then the biggest people Many of the Nobel Prize winners come here. They take those subjects and develop it. There are great writers who come and read materials and go and write books. That we miss all these things. We all the time keep saying our great grandfathers are great people. They are dead and gone. What are you today? What is it that you can produce? And he's a dire devil, I should say. In many areas, he will will we'll be frightened to get in. He will get in. execute it and do it to ensure that there is a continuity in uh, what what he was doing so it is uh, our prime responsibility in balancing the roles in it 
as clinicians as researchers as academicians as uh, business uh, model uh, it's a uh, diverse areas uh, all of us need to find a balance still he is a living legend in the hearts of many whom he loved and also acquainted with he being a man of such phenomenal stature which everybody knows but he was a man who really didn't wear it on his collar but he kept it rolled in his sleeves i always felt that he is a person like you know he's throwing so many seeds and you know some of them he with the belief that many may fall into rocks and may not uh, grow up others may get congested by uh, you know thorns and they will die away but a few will fall on fertile soil and it is enough if they alone grow and what we should learn from you that if you want to be want to prove yourself you have to do it on the ground for his attitude i would say it is warmth for his personality for ayurveda i would call it a sentinel <laughs>